Here on Finance Day at COP27 in Sharm Al Sheikh, we're joined by Nadia, the head of Hub Africa at Siemens Energy. Um, Nadia, thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about technology transfer to developing nations, finance and policy and implementation. But let's first begin with technology transfer. Uh, what are you seeing here? How is multilateralism uh, at COP27 helping to make that dream a reality? Thank you for having me. Well, first, let's address the fact that Africa is suffering from energy uh, poverty and 900 million people globally are still lacking access to electricity. So when we talk about the energy transition in general, we need to address the fact that millions of people still lack the basic human right to uh, access to energy and we need to look at it from an affordability perspective of course in a sustainability perspective and obviously from an energy security perspective technology is key and technology already exists there's so much we can do already now to support uh, the african nations in in transitioning into adding more energy access right and it when it comes to grids and transmission this is obviously key to build resilient energy networks, which will be required whether you add power generation in the form of hydrogen capable gas turbines, which we have, or more renewable power like wind power or solar or even battery, battery storage obviously also plays a key part in defining really these hybrid future energy systems. Um, so uh, firstly, we need to move away from fossil, uh, from coal and natural gas will certainly also be key as part of a transition as bridging technology and for us it's really important to build on these hydrogen capable energy technologies to make sure that we do things today but that these uh, power solutions are also existing in the future and that we can repurpose uh, uh, combined cycle natural gas powered uh, power generation into future hydrogen Hydrogen capable power solutions. Now, in Africa, when you speak about 600 million people being off grid still without access to reliable, affordable electricity, and giant players like Siemens Energy being in Africa uh, operating in several spaces, what you also tend to see among the biggest players is that they tend to choose the safer markets, uh, and whereas the need, the most critical need, comes from areas that are not adept financially to probably match a private investor's um, requirements. So what do you have to say about that? What is being done here at COP27 and how would you like that to be approached going forward? Because you're talking about all of these wonderful options from hydrogen to also at the time, uh, you know, natural gas helping out with the transition phase, but it's still lagging uh, to a great extent. So as a private player, which has been successful in Africa, uh, how would you like to approach that? This is one of the key uh, blocking points, impediments to the socio-economic growth of Africa, the access to capital and to affordable capital. Here is where this dialogue needs to happen here at COP27. There's always be, uh, already been some panel discussions and dialogues around this, and the African voice here is very clear. We need support from the developed part of the world to afford to fast implement uh, this energy transition. And it's for me about following through on commitments already made in the past, right, in, in, as part of the Paris Agreement. And the African countries are, all of them have signed up with clear NDCs and supporting the Paris Agreement. So there's not a lack of support of the net zero targets of making the transition to low carbon uh, economy. But obviously, um, the massive amount of investment needed in energy infrastructure is where the lag is and unfortunately as you point out the emerging markets and countries are the ones who suffer the most and uh, this despite the fact that there is also a rapid uh, growth in demand of energy as also the population in Africa and other parts of the developing uh, world is accelerating immensely so this also from a stability perspective we need to act now and make sure that uh, 
um, the developed part of the world supports Africa with um, investment, with policy, with uh, governance frameworks, and that we facilitate really this transition for Africa. So what I'm hearing is that Africa has contributed the least to these emissions and could, has the potential to actually contribute greatly when it comes to the entire world's energy transition towards renewables, right? Um, now looking at that, how should Africa be positioning itself here at COP27, especially when it comes to the conversation of clean uh, and just transition? Because so far we do see a lot of minerals still escaping Africa. The benefits don't really match what you are mentioning here in terms of its energy requirements and the potential that it holds here. And uh, please do touch upon how governments are also to take responsibility in this regard within Africa when it comes to facilitating this kind of intra-Africa trade and at the same time facilitating private investors to come into Africa and make that happen for Africa. So the governments play a very vital role and the leadership here plays a very important role from the African heads of states when defining really clear policies, clear transition plans. So I think what I want to encourage all the African leaders is really define these clear roadmaps. I mean, I have a great example is, of course, uh, Nigeria that are in the process of defining their energy transition uh, program. And what is needed is really these tangible, clear roadmaps that also consider what is the situation of the country because we talk about Africa as a continent we need to remember that all the countries are in very different phases in their energy development many of the Eastern African countries are already uh, using uh, mainly um, renewable power while we have others that are more fossil based and of course South Africa uh, depending very much on coal today so th this diversification of uh, of the countries of Africa is a great opportunity for them to come together and see how can we collaborate as Pan-African and African Union using also the African Free Trade Agreement to stimulate our regional market, our regional trade and also make sure that in this dialogue there needs to be this perspective of a just transition which really essentially means bringing societies along and making sure that we have the perspective of capacity building, skill sets, jobs creations, because it ultimately has huge potential with the green transition, right? And we talk about Africa with the huge opportunity of becoming a global green energy hub, right? With the abundance and ample supply of solar, of wind that isn't fully uh, exploited and utilized today, the vision is really that we could create um, hydrogen, right? And that we could produce this and of course use it for the domestic use in the region but also to export it and really create this market. What is, uh, coming back to the hydrogen aspect of it, uh, what is Siemens, how energy's viewpoint when it comes to Africa? Uh, what is the kind of money that you're looking to put in here? What is the potential? What is the uh, return on this? So the potential is great. And what we see is also already some key countries that are making the first moves. I mean, the biggest potential, of course, for solar and it predominantly for wind is in, in the north and in the south, right? And here we have already some first movers. Morocco making very clear that hydrogen plays part of their energy future. Egypt, obviously, Namibia, South Africa, and there are a lot of activities ongoing on this. And we as a company, we uh, are supporting these um, these technology di discussions. We're, as you might know, building our gigafactory of electrolyzers in Berlin that will support this transition. So while we also have, uh, have this uh, um, hydrogen-capable gas turbines that are ready, really, for the hydrogen. So equipment. when you develop this kind of technology outside of Africa? Is it cost effective still? Uh, again, coming back to the smaller economies, uh, which might not find it too affordable, is it? Yes. No, first of all, it, yes, right now the cost of hydrogen is too high and it's about bringing down the cost. And uh, again, coming back to that massive investment that will be needed and that the first movers are going to need to um, um, take some risks and, and make some bold, ambitious uh, moves. And coming back to the value creation, certainly I 
I think that this is the biggest challenge also with the hydrogen economy, that we need to make sure that we build products and technologies also where, where the, the resources exist. And I believe truly that Africa has the potential of becoming this hub where it also has the industries, the production, the manufacturing of many of the solutions needed for the green transition. Now, when you speak, uh, you spoke about many East African nations already, uh, you know, deploying a lot of their efforts into green energy. Now, that's because this just started out in the last 20, 30 years. Um, but whereas the bigger economies have been fossil fuel dependent, uh, and now this transition, while great for the planet, is also going to cost a lot of people their jobs. Uh, what is your takeaway from that? And how do you think should governments maneuver through that? This is one of the most important responsibilities of governments and institutions in making these transitions, right? And showing the people that today are stuck in a fossil based um, industry that this is an opportunity and that we responsibly take care of repurposing, upskilling. It is a big topic to make sure that they transition into a new uh, a new world and here that is a part also of creating the motivation to participate actively as societies and that the individual workers see that this is an opportunity for us to stay competitive as a country as a company um, and and here this is such a vital point where the when we talk about just transition it's about of course the sustainable transition it's about ending energy poverty but it's also bringing societies and people along on the journey creating opportunities for people for growth um, for new jobs for new skills and here the dependency on the developed part of the world to facilitate that is also really really critical right this was Nadia the head of Hub Africa from Siemens Energy and we spoke about everything from technology transfer to the scope of hydrogen in Africa and policy and implementation. This was Focus on Siemens Energy at COP27.